Hey everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger, and we have quite the weather shift that's going to be coming into the United States. We're going to be coming from predominantly cooler temperatures, you know, over there in the, you know, southern eastern states and also going into the Ohio Valley to pretty much widespread heat across the United States. It's also going to bring some chances for some severe weather on the northeastern portion of that ridge, that high pressure system that's going to be coming in. So we're going to be talking about all of that so that you guys can be in the know of what's coming to the United States states over the next week or so. First, starting off with the height anomaly map, this is essentially showing the uh, high pressure systems here located in the reds and the low pressure systems located here in the blues. So if we come over to here and bring this forward just a little bit, you can see that, you know, we're going to have this little high pressure system, this ridge kind of move out of the Ohio Valley. And then we're going to have a little bit more of a anomalously low pressure region move into like Montana, potentially bringing still some severe weather up there. But that's going to mainly be for Canada and then that's going to push off to the east and then eventually keep an eye down there in like Arizona and New Mexico we're going to start to see this high pressure system build right into this region you can see you know where this at least the GFS is saying the the, the strongest probabilities of seeing that high pressure really um, kind of form over there in portions of the northwest we also kind of have another little area of high pressure moving into the united states which is going to make those temperatures go up and then on the northern portion of this ridge we're going to see that southeasterly flow and that's essentially going to bring you know some short wave troughs into the united states and we could see some severe weather start to reform back into this region again so we're going to be talking about that in this forecast and also a lot warmer temperatures are going to be coming for this area of the united states with widespread 100 degree temperatures when you factor in you know the humidity that's going to be with these storms all right now we're going to be looking at the shear maps here this is going to give us a little bit of an understanding of where that severe weather could be possible and going into you know friday saturday also going into sunday you can see that we also have this little high pressure system down here still and then we have a low pressure system you see in these brighter colors we have 80 to 70 knots of that uh, upper level shear here going into majority canada but still a little bit kind of poking into the United States. So we could see some severe weather up there in the Northern Plains. That's going to push off to the east. And then eventually that high pressure system is really going to start to consolidate uh, down there as we move into Monday and Tuesday. And then we start to see some of this flow start to return here. We got the widespread area of 30, 40 knots of upper level shear. And that's going to push into areas like the Northern Plains going into the Ohio Valley. And that's going to help uh, usher in some new severe weather. And you can see that that flow kind of exists here going into Tuesday also into Wednesday as well and there could be multiple rounds of severe weather maybe even some chances of tornadoes if we get some of those mesoscale convective systems or kind of like something we saw like in Chicago varying in degree of severity of course that's going to be hard to predict right now but it seems like the main area at least where I think that severe weather is going to be possible is going to be right here uh, in this corridor we could have multiple waves of those little smaller scale system that's going to bring damaging winds the potential for some quick maybe even even not so quick spin up tornadoes as that comes through. So definitely got to keep an eye on that as we go throughout the week here. Now, another thing that I want to highlight here. So now we're down at the surface with this model, and I want to highlight a little system that could be possible uh, off the East Coast. Now, I'm not really expecting this to be anything super damaging or anything, but it could feel kind of feel like a tropical depression. It's not going to be one, but it could kind of feel like it as it comes up. Different models have different scenarios uh, with this, but I do want to kind of highlight it. So if I push this forward into the future here, you can see that uh, we do have a little bit of a low pressure system kind of form off of the eastern coast, kind of near North Carolina there. You can see that little L there, that low pressure system. Now, that should be subtropical in nature, especially as it goes up to the north here as we go into Sunday and then into two, uh, Monday as well. You can see it kind of does a little recurve back into the United States and very obviously, you know, a little bit of wind there at the surface and some models are indicating that this thing could go kind of into you know areas like Rhode Island Connecticut Massachusetts the GFS is saying this is going to go into Maine as a weaker storm but again this is not going to be a tropical system but as you can tell by the surface winds at least this thing is going to have possibilities of getting up into 28 to 29 
29 knots, in the NAM saying up to 30 to 35 knots, which is around tropical depression strength. Now, again, there's not going to be a whole lot of rain associated with this, but just something to watch out for as we go into Monday morning uh, as this thing approaches land could potentially bring some gustier conditions, maybe even a little bit of power outages and some increased waves along the coast and rip currents. So just be careful if you're along the beaches. Coming into the northern plains, the Great Lakes regions in the Ohio Valley area, we're now going to be talking about kind of the timing for some of these storms as they could potentially start to form, you know, as early as Sunday. And going into Sunday, you can see that we do have some precipitation, potentially some severe weather over there in parts of South Dakota, going into Minnesota as well. And then pushing this forward, you can see that we could have some showers and thunderstorms return back up here near Wisconsin, Illinois, uh, Indiana, Michigan as well. And then pushing this through, you can see that we kind of get our first wave of that potential severe weather as we go into like Monday evening here. You can see that we do have an area uh, of some increased thunderstorm activity, potentially a little line of thunderstorms bringing that severe uh, weather capability. And that's going to be around mid-afternoon. And then that's going to push down to the south and east. And it's going to kind of die going into the morning hours. And then going into like uh, uh, Monday morning, you can see that uh, we, can, we have a couple more waves. Another one uh, up there now going into Tuesday. Um, or I guess Monday night and the early Tuesday and that pushes all the way through Illinois and then we have another little area of thunderstorms over there in Michigan as we go into Tuesday night and Wednesday morning and then we have another area here of some potential convection going into Wednesday afternoon and that pushes through Iowa going into Illinois as well and that's going to continue as long as that high pressure system is there I mean look at this going into Thursday still have those waves of thunderstorms and potential with maybe even some small tornadoes potential with them and then you know another wave right there going into friday early friday morning pushing down through the same area so it could be round after round of severe weather uh, as these storms start to develop on the northeastern side of that race so definitely something to pay attention for into the future again it should start at around sunday and then go through at the very least friday we'll have to see how the models progress after that but you know a little bit uncertain on the exact impacts and the exact location so don't be taking the location of this rain blob that you're seeing on this future radar here as exact, but just know that that possibility of wave after wave of severe weather is very possible up here in the Northern Plains, the Great Lakes, and also going into the Ohio Valley. Now, the last thing that I want to go over is going to be that heat. We're now looking at the heat index across. This is what it's going to feel like across the country uh, as this heat wave approaches. And as you can see, going into Saturday and Sunday, we really start to see a little bit of an uptick here of those uh, the heat there. I mean, look at that 104, 102 over there in Kansas, you know, 199 or 199 degree temperatures over there in Oklahoma. It's going to be hot. It's going to feel miserable as this comes through. And then still, that's not even it. That's just the beginning of it. There's even more coming. Look at this uh, over there in the southeast and over there centered in Kansas, maybe even as far north as parts of North and South Dakota and Montana could see those 90s, 110 in the heat index there in Kansas. And again, that's not it. There's still more heat on the way. Look at that. It builds up even more. Uh, uh, potentially up to 112 degrees uh, going into Tuesday. You can see that a widespread heat, really, of 100 spreading all the way from parts of Georgia going into Alabama, Mississippi, all the way up into the southern and central plains here, and then also in the northern plains as well, seeing 100 degree temperatures almost making it all the way up into Canada, which is a little bit ridiculous. Canadians, watch out. If you don't have AC, make sure you're getting them. But yeah, I mean, pushing this even further, you can see that that heat continues going into into Wednesday as well and starts to unfortunately kind of migrate uh, up to, into areas that really can't handle the heat. That doesn't mean they need to get out of, out of the kitchen, but I mean, seriously, look at that. In this area right here, Iowa, Missouri, parts of Illinois going into Indiana, also uh, parts of Nebraska as well are going to be getting in on those hundreds, 105, 110 heat indexes up there. That is kind of ridiculous, I'm not going to lie. And then pushing this forward, you can see that it, 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 it eventually is going to start to cool down. Hopefully by the time we get into Friday. We'll have to see how the models uh, kind of develop. I mean, but still cooling down for some folks, but heating up for others. So you can see Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee going up into the East Coast. We have 104, 102 heat indexes. I mean, widespread white colors across the United States, which is indicating those 90 degree temperatures to 100 degree temperatures, especially in that heat index when you factor in that humidity. So it's not going to just be, you know, some dry heat out there. It's not going to, it's going to feel muggy. It's going to be that air you can wait.
wear type uh, heat that is just not, it doesn't feel good. Trust me, as someone from the Southeast, it feels horrible. You sweat through your shirt. It's, it, it's disgusting. And it's coming for a lot of folks, unfortunately, in the United States. And now we talked about this yesterday with a little bit more detail, but it actually has actually showed up on the National Hurricane Center uh, here. We do have a little bit of a chance of a tropical disturbance forming into something. Again, it's not a very high chance right now. You know, the conditions are not super favorable, as we talked about yesterday, kind of in the short term. But as it approaches the Lesser Antilles and goes past it over into the Bahamas, could potentially, if it can avoid land uh, and take a little bit more of a northerly path, might be in a little bit more of a favorable area to kind of develop into something. Areas uh, to kind of watch out for down the line uh, could be anywhere from the eastern coast into the Gulf of Mexico. But again, still a huge question mark on where this thing is going. Super uncertain. Not really going to be talking about any potential impacts right now just because, you know, there's a the storm hasn't even formed yet. So let's just wait to see if a storm forms. If it does, then we'll do a, a little bit more of an in-depth update on that. But just know over there in the Caribbean, in the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, going to be watching out for some more rain and potentially a organized tropical system. Yeah, that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. And just make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you did enjoy this video. And we'll be back uh, tomorrow with another update. See you then.